Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat. It is episode 36. I'm your host, William Crosby, and joining me today for the first time from Jacksonville, Florida, it's Ian Gibson. Sorry that we didn't do any streams for two weeks, but folks, I was moving, and it's... I don't know that it's ever done when you move. I think it just gets less to do, <laughs> but you're never really done. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I, I moved back yeah. in March, and I still have boxes I haven't unpacked. And also joining us this week from not Jacksonville, California, it's David from Save Data. Was I definitely we definitely did this in one take, and I didn't Google Jacksonville, California, and it does not exist. Dang it! Oh. Honestly, surprising. There because is Jackson, California, is big. California, but not Jackson. Oh. There was there they was didn't want to be associated with Florida. I mean. Uh, there was a Reddit map of famous cities in other states. So it was like I just want to be famous clear. city names in other states. Anyway, I have I, I am officially a Florida resident as of six hours ago, and now I can take offense at that statement. <laughs> wow. Wait, do you have a Florida driver's license now? I do. Within 10 days of moving, you have to get your Florida driver's license and you have to register your vehicles. And I did that today oh. and it costs me. Guess how much it costs me to register two vehicles and get a driver's license in Florida? Zero dollars. No, that's not true. Uh, like one twenty. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Ooh. And I, I get a discount on one of them because it's 31 years old. So I got to register it as antique. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I think that. I don't think that's more than a normal state, though, because I've never really done this move to a state. OK, now you have to like literally because no, that a new is license. more than I paid in California. 100 percent. Yeah, because I <laughs> retype to retitle your car and yes. everything. Yeah. So I moved to Jeez. I moved to New Jersey four years ago and you're supposed to do it within 60 days. So six months ago, I did everything. Um, <laughs> and I want to say it was less, probably less than one hundred dollars for everything. Um, oh wow that's cheap to change my car yeah. over they also made me female on the driver's license and then they gave me the male one and said they voided the other one and then three months later i had to report back so to prove i was the male version of will crosby oh my god um which was awful but i did just renew my registration and you got to order they like let you order new license plates if you wanted a different design and i got the battleship one for the uss new jersey oh so, i'm sorry will i don't mean to up you but I got the space shuttle on. Oh, that. that's oh, that's dirty. <laughs> yeah. I'm into that. It, and the other one is like it's weird. It's like a baby blue antique. Ooh, plane, which is pretty nice. I think the only thing better would be like a Saturn V. That'd be pretty. Dope. Yeah, it's a little weird, though, because it's not it's not the space shuttle. It's also not a NASA plate. It's a uh, Challenger plate. Which is a little morbid, if you remember the Challengers, the yeah. space shuttle that blew up in the 80s. Yeah. So yeah. That's a little... I'm just going to ignore that part. It's a memorial, it's fine. I ignore that part, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, so the move was good? It was good, yeah. We, we were doing from Maryland to Florida, and so we were trying to do it... I don't want to say the right way. We were trying to do it like the, um, the most efficient way possible, which is basically you get everything done... So that when you drive away with all of your stuff, you're done. We don't have to come back and do anything at all. And there was definitely a bit of a headache in terms of like that last day. It was like, okay, we're picking up the U-Haul this time. Then the movers show up to help us pack the U-Haul this time. Then the cleaners show up because we have to do a move out cleaning. And then after that is the rug cleaners show up and everything got weird. Like the U-Haul. Um, well, you've been to my place, that, that Royal Farms gas station. Yeah. That's like less than a mile from my place. There's a giant storage place next to it and i was like great i'll pick up the u-haul there turns out no i'm gonna have to drive 25 minutes in rush hour traffic into the center of baltimore city <laughs> which if you're not familiar with baltimore is 99 percent a place you do not want to be at any time <laughs> of the day <laughs> pick up a 20 foot u-haul which is like 26 feet in length total and drive that out of the city through rush hour traffic so it was it was all sorts of stuff like that but um i think for me highlights were honestly driving that truck it was so much fun like it it was it was a six it was basically a seven hour drive to the hotel the first night and then it was about six hours the next day to florida and it was just so much fun being in the truck and i got used to the size so quickly 
and I felt like such a truck driver and all my Euro Truck Simulator <laughs> 2 experience like came back to me. And it was like, like I was doing the thing, you know, where like a truck driver's trying to pass you and you like flash your lights when he just barely clears your front bumper or somebody lets you and you put on your four way hazards, you know, you hit the brakes early or like my favorite thing is, um, I, I noticed this with truck drivers a couple months ago, but basically if you're like, let's say you're at a stop sign and you're waiting for a gap to turn out onto the road, you don't have to wait for a gap big enough for you to actually clear. You just have to get out and leave enough of a gap that people will see you and be able to break because you're a truck driver. You're a giant truck. That's They're true. not going to hit you. So you're literally just like, yep, I'm just going to pull in front of you and you have more than enough time to slow down for me. And it's like, so it was so much fun. We drove that around for like, it was actually like four days because um, the day or two after we didn't have to turn it in yet. And we were driving all over Jacksonville, picking up used furniture that we wanted. And it was just yeah. like, driving. I, it's, it's at the point now where I thought I was going to, I want to buy a pickup truck because we're doing a lot of like yard and house projects. And we actually need like, like a lot of projects need plywood. Plywood comes in four foot by eight foot sheets, unless you're one of those assholes that bothers them to try and cut it in the store and do all that so it's like i need to be able to haul a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood so i'll get a truck and i was like i should get a tiny truck i don't really like big vehicles but now i'm like literally like how much does it cost to buy a used 20 foot truck i can fit it in the driveway i love driving it you know it's Jeez. crazy i say this with no malice in my heart but you are such a goddamn nerd it's it's so good i love how well you're talking about it the idea of driving that truck right now even though i don't have to do it gives me so much anxiety that i would 100%. literally puke i had that too but then within like 15 minutes of driving it i was like oh this really isn't that bad you know <laughs> yeah i bet it would be it's, that it's just like oh i can't it's a lot of fun it's like when um, people talk about driving rvs i don't think i could ever do that oh no no no. yeah well i could do a trailer I, RV. I could probably do an rv but not no see i could do trailers because trailers are if i don't have to reverse <laughs> if i never have to reverse with the trailer trailers are like devil's magic backing that up and moving around with it yeah. yeah yeah that's true um but yeah so now i'm just i'm in the house we have lots of projects to do like you know you can see my studio is partially unpacked looking um, good i'm like trying to do cable management I got to find a modeling workbench. I got my, my garage is just a mess because it's a lot of my stuff. And then also my. Oh, God. Uh oh. Parents Maybe he didn't built. get the cabling, right? Oh, there he is. No. You, you, Hi. You, you, I'm also on Wi Fi. I'm also on Wi Fi because I haven't run Ethernet to this room yet because the attic is 130 degrees in Florida all the time. So. It's okay. Long story short, you drop, but then it. when you come back, you pick up right where you drop. So we're not missing anything. It's just oh, delayed. Okay. Um, That's crazy. I, it's um, crazy. Yeah, it's lots I, of stuff. I feel like I'm always one step behind you because I now moved into a place that's it's not as big as your condo because I, I, I live in New Jersey. But it's like I have that extra room now that I can put like yeah. I put all my workshop stuff in. So now I have to buy a house next to catch up and you have to buy something bigger than a house after that so just to uh figure everything out anyways folks Mention. um that was ian's move uh i'm glad you're safe i, I missed do, you i do want to say one thing uh -oh. as we transition into games however though i've not played any games I, i'm i'm slowly coming back to like maybe i have some free time to play a little bit of games now and i'm not crazy busy and i happen to play 15 minutes of splitgate today have either of you played split game i haven't game. but it looks really fun yeah I, I have not i it's basically a free to play it feels like halo but it's portals and has a jetpack and i was just blown away by how much production value is in that game from the start and how incredible it feels here's the it's thing so it's not good. from the start it's been in like closed beta for like a year open beta for like yeah. a year so that's true it, it was like I, I saw some people playing it a year ago and it was a lot more rough but yeah looking at people stream it now i'm like oh you know that looks really fun actually <laughs> I, I like i literally played three matches and no i'm sorry i played two matches and in my first match i went i'm not good at fps's but in my first match i think i went 12 kills and five deaths my second match i went 22 kills and five deaths <laughs> and so it just it just feels <laughs> oh <laughs> 
it's, really, it's just it's a lot of fun it's free to play try it out folks it's good uh, those those lags have been really good <laughs> i think i i think i'm gonna drop my camera because that that should help yeah that's fine um okay because then we won't know <laughs> Um, we'll just look at this regal picture of you painted. Um, I can't see you either, so I'm just looking at the hand. Oh, that's OBS true. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, that's awesome. I, I've wanted to try that. Um, I heard a lot of people talking about it that um, a lot of people are kind of ignoring the portal stuff, at least when it first really got popular again. And mm, yeah. Uh, it was, I think it was Alex Navarro talking about how he just started using portals and was like dominating because nobody was really thinking about it. They were just trying to play Halo. Yeah, and, yeah uh, it, it does feel like they're doing a very good job of segmenting new players from more experienced players because the matches I'm in, people aren't like just interacting with them and watching their kill cams. They're not amazing at the game. They're not one shoddy people and they're also not using portals a lot. So they're doing a great job of that matchmaking. And the other thing is like, is like getting used to the portals like like in that second match i had this experience where i started shooting somebody and then i ran out of ammo and they were landing hits on me and i was like oh and i turned around and i just portaled out real quick and then you can cancel your portals and then, so i just turned around portaled out canceled my portals within like a second and i was like oh i'm free i just ran away from him like completely <laughs> oh, he has that's no cool. idea where i am so it's, it's all this stuff that's like slowly starting to open my brain yeah. hole and I'm like, I can shoot people, but be smart at the same time. It's so good. Yeah, I've I seen like some really good clips of people like in sniper battles. And then they're just like, okay, this isn't working. And they just shoot a portal behind the person they're trying to snipe. Yeah. And they just shoot them through the portal. <laughs> and it's like, it's so good. It looks really fun. It also, um, finally, it, it, it just makes shotguns really cool because shotguns always have that thing where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm too far to really do damage. Yeah. But now it's just like, no, I'm just going to portal closer. I'll portal closer, come around the corner, boom. And now I can get them. It's it's, oh, it's so good. You you guys gotta try it. Yeah, that's on Steam and it's free. Yep, it's free on Steam. I think I think it's Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation, right? I don't know. Definitely I just know the Steam. expert. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sweet. I might actually check that out. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm yeah, really. No, I have it downloaded already. I'm really looking forward to Battlefield then Halo multiplayer. Yeah. So maybe I I need to kind of fill that gap. Yeah. Um. David, I have been waiting a very long time because you've stood me up several times uh, to hear about... Once! One time! <laughs> one That's time, true, I was, it was like, one I'm time. sorry, I'm busy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm busy, I have friends. Um, I desperately want to hear about Psychonauts 2 because I've tuned everything out because I know they're all wrong. I need to hear what you know about Psychonauts 2 and what you feel. Y'all, I waited... A decade and a half to get Psychonauts 2. And it's fucking great. It is such a great goddamn game. <laughs> uh, I love it a lot. It, it is different from the original. Um, so I, I at this point, I have played through the entire game. I have pretty much 100% in it. There's a couple collectibles I haven't found yet. Uh, and I'm <laughs> partway, like halfway through a second playthrough. Um, but... I, I the characters in this game are fantastic. Uh, the voices continue to v mostly be fantastic. There's one character mm -hmm. whose voice I just don't like, but I think that's just a me thing because I haven't heard anyone else mention it. Um, the levels are spectacular. They all have their own look and feel. Some have completely different art styles. Like there's a paper craft level where oh, everyone ooh. except like you is like 2D. The buildings and stuff are made out of paper or books and like ink. Like, there are so many awesome concepts in this game, and I, I think they all are executed really well. Uh, the one thing I will say, it it has grown up a lot from the original. So the original okay. definitely had a bit of like an immature take on a lot of mental health stuff. Like, heck, you're going to an abandoned, abandoned asylum in the middle of a lake in the first one uh, with a bunch of like absolute nutcases and stuff who are definitely not okay and you help them through that but like the approach isn't isn't super great it's it's fine enough that it ages okay uh but this one takes a much more like nuanced approach to, to mental health and a lot of your fix like fixing people is, is more complicated and isn't just like oh you do a thing in their head and it's fine sometimes you break people like sometimes you mess things up yeah uh and so there's also there's even like a big conversation around consent too in this game like it is just oh, wow. 
it is so good. I I love it so much that platforming and combat have both been brought to modern sensibilities. Like mm-hmm. the combat is good. There's a bunch of different ways you can do uh, you can do fighting styles. There's a ton of new enemies that are all representative of different like mental states or issues. Like one of the harder enemies is a panic attack. Um, oh, one cool. of there's an enemy that essentially makes other enemies invincible and buffs them up called an enabler who's like a cheerleader <laughs> with like a trumpet and or band member with like a trumpet who's like powering up like it is all so great uh the levels are fantastic if you have played the first one um there are some things similar to like a milkman level in like in how memorable they are but yeah for different reasons um i i do think while the levels are really good in this game they are for the most part less whimsical uh there there are a couple exceptions but like they're a little less less whimsical a little more serious but in Mm -hmm. in a really fun way some of the characters are just absolutely hilarious um i i i love pretty much everything about this game at the moment definitely my game of the year i don't anticipate that changing unless death (laughs) loop is like even better than i imagine and even then i don't think i'll beat psychonauts 2 for me personally uh but i i just I could gush about this game for like half an hour. Like it is so good. It, the everything, everything is so good. <laughs> well, everything is so good. Like I'm so happy. The for collectibles you. in general are improved. Uh, minus figments. Figments I actually think are worse. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, the other collectibles are are better. Uh, they're more easily tracked. Side quests are fun. The writing is still front and center, and, and absolutely hilarious. Like. I was just sitting in my room playing this game alone over the course of like two days. And it was like, I did it like, it was like 20 hours and two days of playing Psychonauts 2. Uh, Nice. (laughs) But like, I was just laughing on my own. Like, that's how funny this game is. Like, no one there. I'm still chuckling at a ton of, out loud, a ton of parts. Uh, My only question is, would you recommend, if I haven't played the first game, playing the second game? You will still enjoy it a lot um it's it's basically you'll miss a few callbacks but nothing crazy important um they have a a few callback jokes in there where if you haven't played the game you might be like that feels a little out of place because it's a giant callback joke um like i think the one that that really comes to mind is uh one of the enemies is called a sensor uh and it pops out and raz the main character is like stop you are a, you are a creation of my own mind and i command you to stop and then the sensor like tries to fucking kill raz and he's like well you know that didn't really work before i don't know why i thought it would work this time and that's like a callback to a, a scene in psychonauts one where a gotcha. character tells these sensors to like stop and they they definitely don't so <laughs> stuff like that uh is okay. there and present but you won't miss a ton and they have a really good um recap so when you start the game it goes through this really cool animated it's like animated in a written not written in a like a drawing style like a very like as if a kid who was good at art drew all of the characters and gotcha. stuff okay uh who is doing like and and they have raz voicing it where he's essentially writing to a true psychic tales comic line to try and get them to publish his story. <laughs> so he's like, he's describing what happens yeah. in the first game and in the VR game. Yeah. Cause I know I, uh, some of the discourse I heard was it not relied heavily, but like some of the plot points are from the VR game that not a ton of people played. Cause clearly it's VR. There, but... there's like two plot points, but they're not, they're very blatant. It's not yeah. like you're going to have trouble catching up. It's like, Oh, you rescued this guy from this other guy. And both of them are here. The rescue guy is unconscious, and the guy who, who did the capturing is like not willing or not able to tell you who his boss was. And that that's mm-hmm. literally it. And they tell you that in the opening crawl, so I don't feel bad okay. telling you that. Yeah. Uh, but that that's it from the VR game that you need to know. <laughs> that's the okay. entire thing. We, it's, yeah, yeah I'm a, definitely gonna check it game. out now that. Yeah, I wanted to hear your opinion on it before I started it. So. It's so good. Yeah, it's I'm so definitely going to check it out. But first, it's on Game Pass, I'm going to play the first one first. Both on uh, Game Pass. I might yep, finish the first one. I, I played maybe 45 minutes. 
and I wasn't against it. I just was like, oh, these are old controls. Uh, yeah, the the first one, I really wish they would just take a very brief moment and go back and fix some of the controls. But like, other than the controls and the last level kind of sucking, the first one holds up pretty well. Gotcha. Yeah, I want to check that out. Uh, other than your Psychonauts 2 obsession, anything else you've been playing? Yeah, uh, I've been playing. I I just got an itch to play like a 4X game. And so I went and started playing some Europa Universalis 4 this past week. Mm -hmm. And man, I forgot how addicted to those games I get. <laughs> I really forgot how addicting those are to me. Uh, like last night I was playing till like four in the morning. <laughs> just Jeez. Wow. <laughs> It's like one of those things where I don't even realize how much time is passing. Like, especially because Europa Universalis 4, it's, it's just a grand strategy game of like Renaissance ish time Europe where you have a mm -hmm. country and your goal is to be the coolest or take the most land. Uh, that's it. That, that's the whole thing. And it's super complicated. It's basically like playing a game of spreadsheets a lot of the time. Uh, Spreadsheet. I you like might like this game. <laughs> I've st I've stayed away from I've stayed away from that game, and um, what is it? I almost said Cape Crusader, Hearts Crusader Kings. Oh, Crusader Kings, yeah. And uh, Hearts of Iron as well, because I I'm They're afraid all of similar. falling into them a little <laughs> yeah. hard. Um, fell oh, real hard this past week. I I had known that I did this before. This is not my first time having a, a EU four binge binge. I just got I got an itch and. Yeah, I was like, well, I'm unemployed. This is the time to scratch that itch before I'm employed and I stay up till <laughs> four in the morning. Uh, so scratch that itch. It is a great game. Again, if you like spreadsheets and strategy, fantastic game. Learning curve is a cliff. Like, Oof. Is, I, I think that's true for most of the Hearts of Iron 2. Uh, maybe not Crusader Kings. That's a little lighter because it's more of an RPG than just like a grand strategy game. But like, man, that, it is a learning cliff because they do not do a great job of telling you how the game functions. Great. At all. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm bad with that stuff. Uh, I, I like someone to walk me through it because then. Oh, yeah. Don't play those games up. <laughs> Um, although I will say like most of my strategy, like learning RimWorld more and especially like Dwarf Fortress was uh, I, YouTubers and like Let's Players are really good at that'll do it and introducing yeah. that stuff. And then also like hearing uh, like almost as if it's a job, like people still look things up even when they're playing those games. It's like, oh, OK, so I don't I'm not yeah, expected to know all this. Um, there are a few things that i still don't get that i refuse to look up because i'm like i this should be easy to understand why is this <laughs> not this easy to understand like castles in this game and the movement around them is infuriating uh, i will they they that wasn't in the game originally and they added them gotcha. and i was like oh my god I, I sort of hate this feature and i've grown to to like it but i still don't understand how moving around the castle works because <laughs> like sometimes you can go to like the adjacent provinces and other times it'll like prevent you from going there because it's like oh the castle uh oh i see the people in the castle will like flank you and i'm like i have 15 times as many troops as could possibly be in that castle <laughs> i don't care if they do let me go to the province <laughs> <laughs> uh and they don't let you so some stuff like that's a bit annoying but bastard overall great game i, I really enjoy that thing and, and the last awesome. thing i've been playing in a lead up to uh what is it Two and a half hours from now, Tales of Arise comes out. Uh, I've been playing Tales of Eternia, or as it's known in the US incorrectly, Tales of Destiny 2, because <sighs> there is a Tales of Destiny 2. It is not the same game. Uh, and the, the funny story around this, this is the main reason I wanted to bring it up. Uh, so Tales of, it's known as Tales of Eternia in Japan and in Europe and pretty much all other regions except for the u.s mm -hmm. and when they brought this game to the u.s the reason they couldn't call it tales of eternia is that the universe of he-man takes place <gasps> in eternia that is and it's true. trademarked wow. so they could not call it tales of eternia and instead when they brought it to the u.s called it tales of destiny 2 because tales of destiny apparently did well enough that they wanted to make it a sequel uh even though they are completely unrelated other than being part of the same franchise and 
So this is PS1. In the PS2 era, I, I think it was PS2, it might have still been PS1, they made a Tales of Destiny 2, <laughs> which they then <laughs> didn't release in the US. Oh, because no. there already was a Tales of Destiny 2. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so Jeepers. it's just hilarious. Uh, but I'm, I'm not too far in. I basically picked it up. I, I had been slowly replaying or playing for the first time. This was the first time. Uh, all the Tales games, uh, and I wanted to get some Tales in before the new one came out. And it, this one is voiced, which was surprising. It's a PlayStation One JRPG that is mostly fully voiced. Voice acting, y'all has come a long way. <laughs> Voice acting <laughs> has come a long way since you don't say. 1997 it's, or whatever this was. It's voiced in English? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that is surprising. It's not entirely voiced, but for the most part, it's voiced. Uh, like, if you talk to random NPCs, they don't voice those lines, but most of the lines between main characters are voiced, and I'm just like, A, surprised, because I'm definitely playing this on a cd and not through you know like psx or something and mm -hmm. when Definitely. i and another one in the opening cutscene, they speak in not english to the point where i thought the definitely not rom that i had was for the wrong region oh. and i went and like <laughs> i went and checked i was like wait a minute is this not the u.s english one and i look at the roms like hey no it's it says U.S. English, okay. And then I look up, like, is there like a different language in Tales? Yes, for this video game, they made their own language. No, <laughs> they made their own language Ugh. that only some of the the inhabitants of the game speak. But the opening cutscene, that was a choice. The opening cutscene is entirely in this other language that is phonetically works kind of like Japanese, but or not Japanese specifically uh hiragana in japanese where it's it's syllabic so it, it's very english it's like a mixture of english and japanese uh basically is what this language is and i was just like why why do this for this game <laughs> like this is cool but also this poor voice actress had to speak with this language Jeez. how do i pronounce this word well, however you want we made it up <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's basically like Tolkien's uh, Elvish, where it is fully, like, they have rules and everything for it. It just is based on English and Hiragana. And, like, it, it sounded so weird that I was like, this is, I got the wrong region in my room. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I got the wrong region. I got to re-download this. And, no, it was perfectly fine. I had to restart the game for literally no reason. Uh, but, overall, best Tales game so far? Which surprising. I mean, I, this is out of the first three, uh, which isn't that surprising because uh, they they just have gotten better each one. And previews are saying the new Tales game coming out in again two and a half hours. Uh, come back pretty positive, so I'm pretty hyped for that. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's awesome. Um, sweet. I uh, have played. I played some Ultima Nine Ascension this week. Um, I have been on a quest to find a video game to play. Uh, it has been a stupid quest because I keep trying to play big games and then it like doesn't really work out or I get bored. Um, I spent like five or six hours getting Ultima Nine Ascension to run in DXWND, which is a windows program that runs get, runs exes in uh windowed mode so it tucks it into its own window uh which is great and then i was adding mods and everything and then i played a little bit of it and it's like 1999 3d so it's it's just good enough 3d that i'm really into it but the controls are god awful um and i'm not into that um so i I might play it some more because I've been uh, the voice acting is like that good like I'm just a guy saying the line sort of voice acting and then there's the occasional guy who's like really into the voice acting um so I, I really want that to play well but uh I, yeah I was just like throwing mods on it and stuff um and the, the other thing about Ultima games which I I've only played, played a little bit of four a tiny bit of seven and nine but they start you 
you play as the avatar at the beginning and you are just a guy in a house that are being called to be the avatar so you like go to your like computer and it like pops up and like there's a tv in the house that says the ea sports it's in the game um and there's just oh, like wow. oh did ea own ultima all the way back then i i guess because it's the last ultima game other than ultima online which is still running um huh. and yeah, it's so weird it's just and yeah, you go to like, there's like a gypsy, uh, not tent, but a cart out back who she like reads your fortune and you pick like what you want to be and everything. Uh, there's a lot of, I, I would love to do a video about Ultima and like the virtue choices and stuff. Cause it's really interesting story uh, with all that, but I don't know if I'm going to keep playing it. It's, it's, I think there's a mod to remap controls, so I might do it, but, um, who knows? Um, the other thing I started playing a little bit of is Outward, which is a RPG that you can also play in co-op, which is pretty cool. Um, it is essentially you're a it's an open world RPG. You're a nobody who was in a shipwreck uh, right outside your town. So you're just back in your town. You owe the townspeople a bunch of money and it's just open from there. You're not special. So. You don't level up or anything as good as you get in the game is just like acquiring things and stuff not you don't get better at sword fighting you just mm -hmm. you learn to get better mm -hmm. at sword fighting um it's so open that i'm like i need a guide because i just need to know where to start and then where to go from there so I, i've i've seen a couple uh videos of let's players on it and it looks kind of up my alley for that sort of stuff but again i gotta dive into that a little bit more um the game i have been diving into quite a lot is uh last year's game of the year for a lot of people which is hades oh yeah okay. um, have you had you played that's it on, before i had never touched it before oh okay. um that's I, on game pass now right yes yep. and 4k um wow. i I played Bastion a couple of years ago on a train ride, and that was fun. Uh, Did Chris and then, make you do that? No, I, it was before I met Chris. <laughs> actually, oh, did, I meet, did I know Chris? I actually don't remember. Um, I have his transistor copy for Switch um, that has been sitting in my house for a while. Um, this game is really good. Uh, I've been having a blast with it. Uh, the voice acting is really good. Um, the combat's really good. I've been using the shield mostly. Um, the bow, I really, I really didn't like. The sword was, was okay. Say, what I really like about Hades, when talking to different people, is most people love completely different weapons. Yeah. Because like, I hated the shield. Didn't jive with it at all. Oh, but really? Like, a yeah, I know a ton of people that love the shield, that love the bow and arrow, and those were like the two weapons that oh. I was like, Eh, I don't I don't really jive with both those like bow I was and arrow I can't guy. do uh, I want to try the spear I have I like I like that the weapons you don't use that much they add the like 20% extra stuff to it yeah. so you're like tempted to do it yeah. um, my only question is how I, this I, now that I'm I had this question when I first started but now that I'm playing the game more I I have since lost a couple times but the first boss the first and second boss I beat the first time I got there. Oh. And well, now, I've, pretty good. now I've been stuck on the third boss a bunch. And now the first oh, yeah. boss keeps killing me. Um, and I will say the reason I beat the first and second boss on the first try, it, it wasn't the same run um, as the first time I beat the first boss, then I beat the second boss, but I've beat them consecutively. Um, I have the power that gives you two health with every hit. So basically, oh, yeah. I got that as like one of the beginning things, and then I would just pick mm -hmm. the health door every time. So I'd end up with like 110 health, and then I would just always attack. So I was always getting my health back. And the one run that I did really well was my dash had a deflect on it. So I was just <laughs> dashing and attacking at the same time constantly. Um, and so I, I was this close to beating Theseus and the bull and the Minotaur. Um, but they got me. Uh, but I actually I, think the Theseus fight is probably the hardest one in the game. <laughs> it's like so hard. I yeah. like, I realized they want you to, I, I, I was going for the bull first. I actually think you should go for Theseus first. Cause he's easier to get. If you get behind him and backstab him, you can do a lot of damage. 
Um, but on the other hand, his spear throwing is really easy to dodge, so you can just take out the ball. It, it's they the most, both have their pluses and minuses. Yeah, it's the most fun I've had yeah. with boss fights since probably a Dark Souls in the sense of figuring out a boss fight. Uh, and it's probably even better than that because in Dark Souls, I always have to end up looking up like strategies versus mm. this, I haven't. So I felt like more confident in that. Um, but this game lends itself a lot more to being bullish where I can just kind of rush into things and get my health back yeah. if I have that it, that upper thing. Uh, but the the way the story's been going with like the, the repeat and coming back and all that sort of stuff has been really interesting. Um, it's it's fairly seamless uh, the way they do it. Like there's no 12 minutes obvious error uh, or like voice acting errors and stuff. Like they, they play it out really well. Uh, all the voice acting is incredible. I like the I like that he can hear the narrator. Uh, that's like a funny trope yeah. that I think is always funny. Uh, it reminds me of like Stranger Than Fiction. Uh, so yeah, I've I've been really enjoying it. Uh, this is I'm trying to rush through it. This is my last week of not having a job, so I'm like, oh, oh congratulations, oh, thank you. So I'm like trying to play video games, and I was like, before I don't have time to play video games. But the main thing Hades satisfies is I have a game that I can just hop into, play for a little bit, and leave. And also the Xbox Quick Resume, I can just turn the Xbox off oh, no. and come back, and there's no problem. Well, and you can, I believe in Hades, you can save mid-run anyway. Oh, maybe you can. I, I haven't actually tried that, but I'll just pause it and it's turn the Xbox off. It's not freaking Returnal where you can. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've been having a great time with that. Uh, I don't know why I put it off for so long. Um, I bought it Jesus actually Christ. last year yeah. on Epic when they Epic had those coupons. And so yeah. I bought it for like 10 bucks on Epic and then never touched it. And then when they announced the Xbox version, I was like, oh, I'll just wait for that. Um, so totally having a blast of that. Um, Great game, yeah. Hoping, hoping to uh, check it out some more. Uh, probably after this, I'll probably stay up. Uh, anyways, folks, that has been what we've been playing. Sorry for running a little late. Um, I am going to hit the news song, and then it'll be time for the news. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What is up, news the words said by the master himself man i have like i know i don't have something in my eyes but i'm when i blink i'm like getting glazed eyes it's really annoying i know everyone is very <laughs> excited about that but i just had to <laughs> had to shout it out you know it's, it's really annoying uh there's been a lot of news this week but no news has made me as happy as the giant actually uh, there's other good news here too, but the giant heel turn and 360, 180 neck breaking whiplash that Sony did involving the Horizon Forbidden West. And even when they did 180, still were like, well, we were right though, uh, in the wow. most <laughs> angsty teen way possible. Uh, for folks who don't know, there was a Forbes article that came out basically saying uh, sony came out and said hey it's gonna cost uh actually they didn't say this they said hey you can buy place you can buy horizon forbidden west for 60 dollars on the playstation 4 or you can buy it for 70 dollars on the ps5 or you can spend 80 dollars and get both versions of the game because yeah. that's stupid um no the I, I, this is an aside, but this entire fiasco has never made me more happy that Xbox made smart delivery. <laughs> like, yeah, it's at, so, like it's such a no brainer. So, even third parties are doing it right. Like, it's just Sony. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so anyways, um, so they said this. They also said there's no way to upgrade your $60 PS4 to the $70 PS5, which is also crazy because the Ghost of Tsushima director's cut has come out. The uh, uh, Death Stranding one's going to come out in a couple weeks. So, like, there's ways to do that. There's been a precedent set. So, anyways, this... this um, Who is this? Uh, Paul Tassi from Forbes wrote this whole article also mentioning that back when the PlayStation 5 was at launch, um, 
the Sony published a blog post that said the PS4 digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles and within the quote unquote launch games, they had Marvel, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Sackboy, Big Adventure and Horizon Forbidden West. Now, notice the phrase launch games, because that's an important phrase, apparently, because um, <laughs> as we all know, uh, that game has been heavily delayed. I, I apologize for saying this whole story, but it's the one story I know really well. So I'm just going <laughs> to tell it and then we can discuss it. Um, so anyways, this article came out and it's like, yeah, you're right. They did say it was going to be free. Why? Why is it not free? Um, so then the let's see, that came out on. September 3rd and then September 4th, Sony came out and said, hey, um so players who purchase the horizon forbidden west on playstation 4 you can upgrade it to playstation 5 version for free um so now we're in the position where if you want the game for ps5 just buy the ps4 version for 60 dollars and upgrade it for free um they also confirmed moving forward which is another crazy thing because this wasn't even the case beforehand that newly releasing games on PS4, both digital and physical will offer the $10 digital upgrade option for PS4 to PS5, which wasn't an option originally for Horizon Forbidden West. So it's like they missed a whole window. I mean, that's sort of what they did for Ghost of Tsushima director's cut and other director's cut is like, if you buy the director's cut on PS4, it's $20 and then it's a $10 well, upgrade to get the PS5 yeah. version. No, but what I'm saying is even they weren't offering it free. They weren't even offering for $10 before this guy pointed it out, which is weird that they're also <laughs> yeah. enacting the policy now. But my favorite thing is Jim Ryan saying, while the pandemic's profound impact pushed Forbidden West out of the launch window we initially envisioned, we will stand by our offer. Like, even though technically we're right, I guess you guys can have like that pissed me off. But the, that was but the part the, that pissed they, okay. me off. They said launch window, right? Yeah. And and it was originally planned for what? Like, did they ever put a date on it originally? Was it like March or April? It was 2021. Is, I want to say was the only it's thing. Such a, I believe it was supposed to be a spring 2021 game, which is just like the launch window is such BS anyways. Like it is a launch title or not. If if it is several months after the console has launched, then then it's it's not a launch title period well that's so for why them to... they differentiate between window and launch title <laughs> exactly yeah so for them to to lean so heavily on the bs marketing term of launch yeah. window anyways as as some sort of argument is just like you messed it up you 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 are so yeah. far behind in the game and you're not even making good efforts to catch up on it you think that yeah. your ip can carry you through this so that you can continue to just bilk people of their money when they shouldn't have to pay for it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The other thing is like, was there no, is there no internal strategy at Sony for what this is going to be? Like they, there was no precedent laid down before this that someone had to bring it up so they could make my, a statement. Yeah. My guess is that they have people with conflicting opinions and they're like, well, we're going to do this because we'll make more money this way and we'll see how people respond. And people responded really negatively. So then they were like, okay, we're going over to the plan B. Let's go with the plan B. That's the one we're sticking with. Yeah, and the, someone the old... is over there. I told you so a bunch yeah. of people. That's my, I issue. hope the... they differentiate the PS4 and PS5 sales of horizon for Ben West. So we know who the suckers are. <laughs> like, like the only <laughs> The only thing that they have been semi solid on is basically saying, oh, if you want to play the PS5 version of this game, it will cost you $10 more, whether you yeah. pay that at retail or you upgrade from it, etc. And that's that's ridiculous, considering that it's not just smart delivery from Xbox, but it's also the idea yeah. of like, no, you're not buying an Xbox One version or an Xbox Series X. It will just play at the maximum resolution intended for the console you are playing that yeah. game on i just which like, is fantastic I, I would get it if it had special features that are like tied to you know having like the ssd in the console yeah. and stuff like there are certain things that are not in the ps4 version that are in the ps5 version and that results in a ten dollar charge like i don't like that but i can stomach that whereas yeah. like the ghost of tsushima one uh 
I did pay the extra for the PS5 version, and then I looked at like comparison videos and stuff online afterwards, and I should have looked at it before, but I was being an idiot. And they're the same thing. Like I got better yeah. load times that I would have already gotten because it's on an SSD. I didn't need the PS5 yeah. version to benefit from that. So I'm like, it's just why am I even paying ten extra bucks? It's just so ridiculous because when you think about it, like with Ghost of Tsushima, there are basically four, according to Sony's idea, which is stupid, there are four versions of that game. There's the PS4 version, there's the PS4 Pro version, there is the PS4 copy played on a PS5 version, and there's the PS5 version. And some of those have price differences, whether it be hardware. The Pro and the 4 have different versions. Well, it's not explicitly different versions, but essentially they are performing differently and they are expecting you to I mean, pay differently no, for that performance. Uh, the payment stuff, yes, but performance yeah. wise, that's no difference from the Xbox ecosystem. Like, yeah, the Xbox but, One, the Xbox One X, the One S, the Series S, and the Series X all played games at different fidelities and frame rates and stuff. So, yeah, but the difference is Sony expects you to pay for that difference yeah. at certain points. Which is which ridiculous. I already did by buying the new shiny. <laughs> yeah. What What's crazy to me too is that they originally, before all of this, expected someone to pay sixty dollars for the PS4 version, then buy a PS5, then pay seventy dollars for the PS5 version. Yeah, yeah that's, that's so stupid. It's like I don't think there is such a small handful of people that do that. Like why? Yeah. But it's it's just. I don't know. This whole story was mind boggling. And I'm like, good for that Forbes guy. Like, put that out. Like, that's the type of crap you need to catch these people on. Because, um, I look, it's, it's a good article. That headline is god awful because it makes it sound like it's, it's such a sarcastic, tongue in cheek headline. Yeah. It's <laughs> the headline of the Forbes is, quote, Sony explicitly said a PS5 Horizon Forbidden West upgrade would be free. And I, I was traveling, I was moving, so I read that, and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And it wasn't until I saw you guys' commentary that I was like, oh, he's saying that they previously said that, and now they're reneging on it. It was like, well, what a terrible headline to to, to sum up the fiasco. It's like, come on, man. You it's know? funny, too, because you were traveling, and I posted that, and you said, very surprising. And I go, really? And then I, I, it was after I replied to you that I was like, oh, that he thought it was this way. I was... Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely a poor, poor choice of words. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on to uh, arguably worse news. Uh, the Tripwire CEO steps down after supporting Texas anti-abortion law. Uh, anyone anyone want to chat about this? Take the lead. I already um, talked about it once, so please someone else lead. <laughs> I, I will. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. This this story, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, so basically, this is this is John Gibson. He uh, is the CEO of Tripwire, who has done games like Killing Floor, um, uh, Red Orchestra, Rising Storm, etc. Um, and he basically did a tweet. I'll read the tweet right here. Uh, quote, proud of U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of this issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer that is from his personal Twitter account. Um, he faced a lot of backlash for expressing that opinion to the extent that he has now, um, quote, stepped down. I don't think there was any more explanation of internally whether he was forced out or not, but he has stepped down because of the reaction to this tweet. And um, look, I, I just want to be clear. I, I'm pro-choice, but I don't. I, I look, if he had made the opposite tweet and said, I'm against this because I'm pro choice, there would have been no backlash and he would have kept his job. This, this feels, this, this feels awful. It feels like this guy has been slammed from his job for having a political opinion. Yeah. And I'll agree, I'll agree with you there. Cause like that definitely would not happen if he came out on the opposite side. That's um, true. I will say, I think it's also poor judgment because yes. it's he knows that's a, a bad opinion like he knows he thinks it's a good opinion but he knows he will get flack for it it's the same way any of those sort of trump supporters maga stuff say their stuff because they know they will rile people up there's yeah. it's the person tweeting 
man, it's, hey, today's my birthday, but you don't have to wish me happy birthday. Like, you're, you're asking for it. So, yes, he shouldn't have gotten forced out for expressing his opinion. It's free country. You can express your opinion. But also you are, it's also his personal Twitter, but you are the representative of an entire company, plus you are saying a thing that doesn't sit well with a lot of people who you probably know work at your company. Um, yeah. That's a judgment call, for sure. That's the thing for me. Like, there is 100% the freedom of speech in the U.S., but that doesn't mean you're free of consequences. If you say something stupid and get called out for it, guess what? You, you said something stupid. That You're free to say that. Power to you to say that. But uh, if you say something that is dumb or really unpopular and get backlash for it, especially when you know it's unpopular, he says it, and then does it anyway, especially when it marginalizes a group of people that work for him and work for companies that they contract with. It'd be different if this was like a uh, like a programmer or a QA person. This is the president of the company. His opinions are the opinions of his company. Um, that, that's just how that works. So by having an opinion as the leader of a company, that is by transitive property the opinion of the company and people that work there that have different opinions or feel like that is oppressing them as i mean yeah. let's be real as I, that texas law is it is oppressing people um like mm -hmm. they have every right to backlash this guy because it was such a stupid thing to do like I, yeah and and if i work for someone who says they it says not that they have a different opinion than me but one that's like i'm ab abhorrent to i'll be like yeah. do i want to work for this person anymore and at that point yeah. may, how many workers might have come up to leadership and said hey it's either him or me and enough people said that, that they asked him to step down yeah. um, i mean to, to for full transparency like a lot of the reason i left my job earlier this year had to do with how my work was handling covid like and mm -hmm. having so many differences with the people in charge of like, no, that's not okay. That's borderline illegal or that is illegal. Like I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> that's fine. I'm, yeah. I'm leaving. Uh, when it just kept happening again and again with no sign of, of improving. Um, mm -hmm. so like every, if enough people voice that opinion, then yeah, I, I would totally remove him if I were on their board or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. It's definitely, it's definitely not in good taste to, to tweet this especially to tweet any political opinion when you are the ceo and semi-public face of a company um yeah it, it just it feels like to me even though i may not agree with his opinion it definitely feels like in the games industry there are quote-unquote good opinions that are on the left side of u.s politics and there are quote-unquote bad opinions on the right side of u.s politics and one side is definitely punished more than the other. So, for example, if you remember the whole uh, Palmer Lucky being forced out of Oculus because he was actually supporting GOP groups and uh, that were doing like pro Trump billboards. And at mm -hmm. the same time, Max Temkin, who uh, is one of the head of Cards Against Humanity group, was spending money on uh, pro Hillary billboards and nobody gave a shit about that even though both billboards were in awful taste i believe the um i believe palmer lucky's group the, the billboards they were putting up were like lock her up in reference to hillary <laughs> and uh max temkin's billboards were things like trump is a hanzo main which is just a basically a shit post as a as a political billboard <laughs> and it was like it was like how could you possibly get so upset at one and get him removed from his company, but somebody who is making like an equally strong and awful taste. Okay, you cannot opinion. compare those two as I equally absolutely can. No, I absolutely one can. is a shit post, and one is like trying to get someone in prison. We should move along from. This but also, topic. Max Temkin <laughs> was a horrible person, anyways. So. He was eventually a horrible person. But my point being that it it I don't I don't appreciate that people are presenting so much backlash against individuals who are running games companies or who are big in games industry for their political opinions, yeah. but it's only for certain non-mainstream political opinions. It's saying yeah. you're on the wrong side of politics, therefore we're going to run and you out of it, this industry. And that doesn't sit well with me. It also is bad because it perpetuates the I'm a persecuted person for having this opinion 
Uh, yes. And that's also not a good thing. So anyways. I mean, they already I mean, know that when they're going to say yeah. it. So I don't think. Good riddance to anything. this guy. <laughs> Listen, if you run a company, don't have a strong opinion that is publicized. And yeah, you get what's coming to you. Um, I this next one this employee survey for Parix Interactive I did not read this article I don't know if either of you did um uh I nope. skimmed it again a bit and uh I actually hadn't hadn't seen this and I it's very ironic that I was playing EU4 this week um but yeah can, even Swedish developers who have a lot more strict uh, controls over workplace harassment and stuff than the U.S. Uh, significantly more strict. Still, 44% of the 150-ish uh, employees from the survey said they have experienced mistreatment, and uh, the women it comes in at like 70% uh, when you only take the women from that that poll. So. Uh, Imagine what that is in the U.S. and, like, Canada and stuff, and I bet Oof. them numbers are a lot higher. Yeah. And that's yeah. really all I got to say about that. Yeah, Games Thank industry you. needs some, some fixing. Yes, it does. I, I mean, a lot of industries need some, some fixing, uh, for sure. They do, but we can start with games. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, this next thing, this sort of rumor going around last week that was then, uh, the rumor was confirmed um, from sources. Nothing from Nintendo yet, but... Uh, apparently Nintendo is set to add Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles to the Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, they have around 80 NES games and 50 Super Nintendo games uh, currently between regions. Um, question I had for you gentlemen is, do you think the Pokemon games will be among? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I Are agree. Stupid. No, <laughs> I of, only asked that because the least... <laughs> Think of the least popular Game Boy, Game Boy Color game you can think of, and it will absolutely oh. not be on Nintendo Switch Online. Before you rip me a new one, this is not my opinion, but that was everyone who was retweeting this was like, can't wait to play Pokemon Red and Blue on my, or like green, they're going to put the Japanese green out. The, I'm like, they need to press is, for disappointment on that one. That is not yeah. happening. As like, someone, listen, all of the drops, <laughs> every time they do this, for NES and for SNES, they're so they bad. have like, Two to three games that are legitimately good, and then garbage, utter, gar <laughs> utter garbage yeah. is I, the rest of the stuff. I I know they know this, but Nintendo, I would give you so much money if you put every game that ever came out on any of your systems, barring licensing stuff, out on the Switch and charged a, like charge like App Store rates. Even if you charged fifty bucks a game, I'd probably still pay it. But like a dollar ninety, like just. Do the I virtual console again, please. Haven't done this yet. I cannot believe I haven't done that. I just, I don't, I, I get it. I, it's part of me gets, there's someone at Nintendo who says, hey, I want to separate our, our nostalgia from our modern console, but then also they're stupid and I hate them. I um, honestly, I think it has more to do with concerns about releasing old games, hurting new game sales. Like if they right. release... Yeah. If they put Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow or Silver and Gold on Virtual Console, will people buy the next Pokemon? And me, I would play Silver and Gold, but I'm not going to buy the new ones. But mm -hmm. I also probably wouldn't have bought them anyway, so like, just chill Nintendo and release them. If people love Pokemon, they're going to buy the new Pokemon games. They're not going to sit That's there true. and play the old games uh even for mario like they have super mario world and uh, super mario world 2 yoshi's island i still bought bowser fury and the all-star collection because mario's great i just get to also play the old ones more easily than hooking up my snes yeah yeah it's just like i yeah it it's weird it'll be interesting to see what game boy and game boy color titles uh listen to the the most recent this is the three most recent games they released to the the snes Oh, online God. this is from july of this year this is recent they released claymates <laughs> jelly boy and bamboozle Jeez, Louise. you got bamboozle baby that's the, <laughs> that's the quality of game and the renown of game that they're releasing oh, on virtual console i <laughs> yeah it's Meanwhile, I'm sitting here with a super. I have an NES classic that happens to have more games than a game with on it, and it's incredible. Um, but <laughs> it just happens. It just, it's just—it's weird. There. I don't know how they got there. <laughs> um, but it's just like we were so close, 
and then like like take either of us for example i bought the nes mini i bought the snes mini mm -hmm. i bought the mario games when you remastered them i still <laughs> bought games on the wii u and everything like yeah. i will pay for the old games i will pay for the new games i just want a place that has them all in one spot so i don't have to plug in 30 million maybe, devices maybe they have like a big red button behind like in a red case covered with glass that says in case of emergency release <laughs> virtual console and they're just like waiting for like the yeah. switch to have a bad sales year and they're like uh okay hit the button hit the button <laughs> we get the gamecube and the n64 virtual consoles with it's individual like, titles to buy <laughs> yeah it's when miyamoto dies his like dead man switch goes off <laughs> and releases all the uh, games Oh, when he gets hit on his bike that he's not allowed to ride anymore. Um, yeah, that's just crazy. Poor, poor Shiggy. He just wants he wants to play those games where you try not to do that thing, but <laughs> sometimes you got to do that thing. Anyways, uh, PlayStation Showcase was today. Uh, either of you watched this? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I watched it live. It was fun. I watched it as well. Uh, we're going to go through some of the highlights here. First and foremost, top of the show... Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake. They just put it in the title because why not? Um, either of you That's fans fine. of the KOTOR series, I know I am one. I have not played them, but I, I, I have wanted to play them and just been scared that like they haven't aged well. So I, I, I have been hesitant to go in, go get them. And then they're like, hey, there's a remake. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm just going to wait for that now. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same i i've been wanting to play them for years now and i was like i don't know i don't know it's probably too old now and now i'm just gonna wait a little bit longer and play the remake yeah i, I played a lot of one uh every single time i've come close to beating one my save game has corrupted uh this has oh. happened on the original xbox the pc and the xbox 360 so, so i have just stopped trying to play it for time <laughs> and by almost to beat I, I like I don't know if I was close to the end, but I was a good 40, 50 hours in the game. Uh, I mean, probably that not. I, I forget how long that game actually is, but probably three quarters of the way through. Um, so uh, this is, I believe it doesn't say here uh, on this GameSpot article, but I believe they said it was a um, year long console exclusive. Um, I'm not sure. That about makes PC. sense. It, uh, I believe I, if they say console exclusive, that usually right. I, but I don't know if that means yeah, PC is exclusive. day and date with the PS5 release, or it'll I just come to PC some other time. Imagine them not putting Knights yeah, of the Old Republic on yeah. PC day yeah, one. That's true. Um, anyone care about Project Eve? Uh looks like a yeah, weird it looked like a... slash bayonetta ripoff. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. have you forspake of forspoken? Because I, so I missed spoke. the beginning of this trailer, and apparently the beginning of this trailer was in like modern day. Yeah. Yes, the it looks like time traveling isekai or something. I went. Oh no, she's in gorgeous. Jersey City. Run. <laughs> <laughs> this game looks I, gorgeous, but I'm not sure how good it's actually going to be. I'm curious, but not like hyped. Is where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else looked fine. She looks like she's from Uncanny Valley. Yeah, a little 100%. bit. Yeah, she looks like uh, that robot lady who's like in real life. Uh, I forget her name, like Jennifer. Yeah, she or something. looks like Twenty One uh, Pilots yeah. from Roblox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the thing that has me interested in this game is the writer or one of the writers on Rogue One, who's also done some <gasps> comics and Gary stuff. Witta. He, Gary Witta. He Gary Witta is attached to this one, like which Gary has Witta. me has me more interested than I would be normally. Because, like, when I just see, like, an Issei kind of thing, I'm like, okay, like, that's a trope. What cool thing are you doing? But with, like, uh, an mm -hmm. established, like, good writer attached, I'm like, okay, you know what? They, they could take this cool places. So I'm interested. I'm curious. I wonder if he'll write the in-game text like uh, George R. R. Martin didn't <laughs> for Elden Ring. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. Gary has done some consulting on Halo and stuff too, so I don't actually know. I, can I just say real quick? I'm so happy I was not on that episode because <laughs> I was like, I was like, it's surprising he's not writing it. And then you guys were like immediately just like, yeah, of course he's not writing. They don't write it. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a good point. I'm an idiot. I should. <laughs> so glad I didn't say that on the episode. <laughs> so glad I wasn't there for that. Oh, that's so good. Um, 
Next up, one of my favorites, Alan Wake Remastered. This was actually announced a couple days ago, a few days ago, on a fan Alan Wake website, which I was into because that's where they chose to announce it, and I think that's adorable. It, um, it's adorable, but also weird. Yeah, <laughs> they would I mean, announce definitely it there weird. and then and then announce it days later at a PlayStation thing instead of having like the trailer punch. Uh, I never played Alan Wake, and I'm interested in it, but I don't I... think the remaster looked particularly visually no. good. <laughs> no, it just it just looked like a 720p yeah, game playing at 1080p. Looked, yeah. It, it looked like, better you, than the do? original, I'll say that much. Um, yeah. I genuinely love this game. Um, I played it in college with my friends. Very fun. There's also really yeah. good, uh, really good for the game rock music like there's a band oh, nice. in the game that's famous in world and so they like wrote the songs for it and you have to like that's fight cool. off waves of enemies while they're playing the show um that's really cool um yeah i'm really looking forward to this it's been i think it was 2013 or 14 i played through it so it's been a good seven eight years yeah. so i'm excited to get back and into having, it having played control i'm interested in the universe too so barry's also great he uh he's your because you're a writer so he's your agent and he it's all about light and darkness so he wraps himself in christmas lights and just oh like God. walks around like that oh it's so good <laughs> um uh this is probably the most exciting news of the entire thing is the fifth grand theft auto is finally being released yeah, onto next, the playstation next, yeah, yeah, let's skip that so um <laughs> they showed off a little bit more ghostwire tokyo um, that game looks looks so wonky that i really want it to be good you know yeah. like the whole like first person doing gestures to to shoot weird creepy yeah. enemies in downtown tokyo is like okay okay it doesn't do look it. like a game for me just because like tango game work stuff generally isn't for me but it looks interesting it's a game i think yeah. i would buy after watching someone play it and being like oh yeah maybe i will will like if yeah. i held the controller for a little bit and tried it because then I would know. Um, yeah. This next one, uh, I will say, I'm only angry at this next one because it should be another ten dollar upgrade. Um, Do you but think? It's, I, I was just about to say, like, this is not a ten dollar upgrade, right? This is a brand new no, purchase it, for the PS5. It's a brand new purchase. It's the, I'm pretty granted, sure it's, it's going to be a new it's purchase. Two. It's one sixty dollar game and one forty dollar game put together for I'm assuming seventy dollars. But still, I own Uncharted oh, yeah. for A Thief's End. I've never played The Lost Legacy. I don't want to pay and for them. Completely. It's going to depend. I'm going to that's going to be one of those ones where if I play these, which I played the first three Uncharted and haven't played four and I didn't like the first three. I think I talked about those here. Yeah. I don't remember. Um, it's th that's one of those ones where you watch a comparison video online before you buy it. And you're like, OK, when they say yeah. remastered, what do they mean? Yeah, I, like, I think it's I think different. it's literally like like PS4 Pro never achieved true 4K and it struggled yeah. to do their fake 4K 60. So this is probably just the PS4 version running at a locked 4K 60. Yeah, I, I, and, I there's no I, yeah, I, I really doubt they went and it touched up anything. I, I will you know? say this: uh, Uncharted 4 is my favorite Uncharted. It is way better than the previous three. I've played all of them except Lost Legacy. I really like four. My only complaint about it is it is a little too long it just goes That's on for a little too long game um, I, <laughs> I the other thing i will say is i agree with you ian because that this game looked incredible on a playstation 4 when it came out so i, yeah. I can't it didn't look any different to me in these trailers so i'm assuming it's just a 4k upgrade in whatever engine they use um brad shoemaker said several times that the lost legacy is better than like it's his favorite uncharted game because it's like compact and action packed. Uh, I really want to play that. I, I've always wanted to try it. Um, I'm looking have forward to this. The douchebag Nathan Drake is the main character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I can get this on PS5 or PC. I'd probably just do PS5 because that's easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. Uh, moving on. Uh, this next one was a surprise to me. The uh, Very Insomniac amazing. Games announcing a Marvel Wolverine game. Um, Ooh, this, I, you know, honestly, I enjoyed Spider Man, and when I saw this, I, I was like, you know what, this makes sense. Give him some more Marvel Marvel property. Let's do something other than 
you know, more Spider-Man. Let's get them something else they can sink their teeth into. And then two trailers later. (laughs) And they're just like Spider-Man 2. And I'm like, no, why? Why? Because Miles Morales, look, I I don't think Miles Morales was a bad game, but I stopped playing it after 90 minutes because I was just like, oh, it's just more Spider-Man, which which was starting to wear thin by the end of Spider-Man 1. And so for them to just do Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and then Spider-Man 2 all over again, I'm like, no, no, no. Wolverine is the correct direction they should be going. That's roughly the same format of an established ip but doing a proper open world game for it etc give them something new and that's why i was so yeah. excited about this and so crestfallen it, when it was spider-man 2 i mean they, they've got both which is yeah honestly yeah. this trailer to me it didn't really tell me anything other than like oh okay cool i could go for an actually good wolverine game and be like how does insomniac have this many projects going <laughs> yeah the other thing is like, they- they're magic they didn't put a date for the Wolverine game, but they put a date for the Spider-Man 2 game. So I'm not... Year 2023, yeah. Yeah, 2023. Sorry, yeah, year. So people weren't sure if that's the next Insomniac game, then it's Wolverine, or Wolverine is between now and Spider-Man yeah. 2. I don't no, know, I believe... but either way, like they just released Spider-Man 2018, Miles Morales in 2020, and then... Or wait, yeah. Miles Morales 2020, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart 2021. <laughs> and then two more years till the next one like they are cranking it out and yeah. from reports they're not even crunching like i don't know how the hell they're doing it <laughs> yeah I, I did read into it a little bit and they said wolverine is in early development so okay. probably post spider-man 2 okay so that makes sense I- i'm glad they're announcing it now um i i think i i never finished spider-man 1 i didn't play miles morales i think i'm just gonna wait for spider-man 2 Actually, 2023, I've got two years. Maybe I'll just play through Spider-Man 1 again. Um, God of War Ragnarok, we got a trailer. Oh, no, I'm, excuse me, excuse me. You skipped Grand <laughs> oh, Turismo sorry, 7. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I scrolled down to Spider-Man 2. That's why. Shit. Sorry. Grand Look, I just, let me just, Horizon give me, give me Zero a minutes, Dawn a 7. Here. Look, the thing about Grand Turismo 7 is that it, it does a perfect balance between arcade and sim, leaning slightly more towards sim racing um because there's a seto corsa which is too simmy there's i racing which is ultra simmy there's forza horizon which is very arcadey there's forza which feels god awful and quite frankly doesn't belong on that spectrum anywhere because the racing doesn't feel good gran turismo is just like a really good pick up and play but also feel very good while you're driving these cars and the problem that people have with gran turismo sport was that at launch, it was just kind of a bare bones experience where it was just like, hey, here's some cars and some tracks, but it's really going to be about online. And the online has rules you're not used to, like sportsmanship. Like if you hit other cars too much, we're going to put you in suspension for several days or ban you from online, which I think personally is good for a racing game. But for the audience, Gran Turismo is typically used to, it was surprising to them. So Gran Turismo 7 is a PlayStation 5 game. The visuals look incredible and from what they showed in this trailer they're kind of bringing that typical gran turismo experience back where you have the map you have like a showroom you have different challenges you're like buying cars you're selling cars on the used market you're picking up upgrades for them you've got liveries so it's this feels like a true mainline gran turismo game for the playstation 5 and i just i can't wait because the 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 driving feels so good and they do all this really neat stuff around it. Like, have you guys played any Gran Turismo games? No. Uh, Gran Turismo <clears throat> 2 on PlayStation 1. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. So so something they've had since almost the beginning is, <laughs> for example, like, if you're not sure how to drive, they literally just have a series of challenges that are like, hey, here's how to take an, S, an S-curve. Yeah. Now try to get from this point to this point in 10 seconds. And you're just like little mini challenges, but they teach you so much about driving and not just driving in this game, but also like actual driving. Like when I play iRacing and even when I'm driving a little faster than I should on the back roads of Maryland or Florida, like I'm 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 remembering things I did in Gran Turismo where I'm like, oh, yeah, I should try and hit the apex here and get on the throttle here. Like it's just such a fantastic racing series and I can't wait for it to come back on next gen. (laughs) God of War Ragnarok. Uh, no, that Which actually, is the actual title. genuinely genuinely sounds yeah. pretty good. Um, just to go back, I can't to wait Grand to Turismo. play this game this year. Ragnarok is coming out in 2021, which is 
insane no, when it's you think not. about it. No, it's no, not. No, he's being facetious because no, he's an idiot. Are you sure? Because when they first announced it, they put a year on it of 2021. Yeah. They that did. was before they, the pandemic. They also wasn't it? did that for Horizon. No, it was during. Uh, they also did that oh, for Horizon was. Zero Dawn. Yeah. I believe Ratchet and Clank was also a launch game. There's no uh, law against being hopeful, sorry. Ian. No, I actually I don't think Ratchet and Clank was never a launch game. It was launch window. It's still in the launch window. <laughs> it was a hundred percent a launch game, <laughs> and they pushed it. It's just like like this is so crazy because at the end of this God of War Ragnarok trailer from today, there was no date. They just flat out took the date off completely. They messed up so badly that they're just taking it anyway, off. To be fair, this game going back to the actual cool things about it like this looked so good yeah <laughs> i'm excited like graphically looked beautiful yeah. uh it's it's after the time skip where if you play the first game there is a time skip like in the post credits or whatever uh probably mostly to account for boy's voice growing up <laughs> yeah for sure because <laughs> that kid hit puberty who voiced him uh but like there's a tease I'm su it looks so good. I am super here for it. I, I will say I they have a just feeling like they just don't know an exact date and didn't want to do a horizon, so they didn't put a date yet. They straight up said a major a spoiler of the first game in the trailer. And I was just like, oof. Like not that they can't do that, but it was just kinda like Listen, if you're watching a trailer for a sequel and you don't expect spoilers, you're a I fucking I know, idiot. but it's like the big <laughs> reveal at the end. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, oh, oh, I when he said the they L word, do spoil yeah, it, but yeah, but you wouldn't know what he's talking about. That's true, but still, so I, I just fine. thought it was kind of jarring. Anyways, I, I'm excited for this. Karen played through this last year. Actually, there's she had a string of oh, at my old apartment, you can see the TV in the background, and she beat like four or five games during streams because she would so i think that was one of the games she beat on stream so if you go back and watch one of our streams she, there's the entire ending of god of war in the background but um yeah I, i'm really looking forward to this um that it looks is, really good yeah I, man i'm gonna have to play this like in secret so she doesn't see it because she won't want to watch me play it she'll want to play it so it's the worst having a a girlfriend who has who likes playing video games and not just watching you play them <laughs> um oh. anyways that was the playstation how dare showcase she i know how dare she um oh, that is a joke for anyone please that is a joke <laughs> i'm not women you know it's the same data stance uh i think that's it for the news uh because the last news item was the alma week remastered which is covered already which means mm -hmm. you know what time it is folks it's time to play the music and get the heck out of here because it is way past my bedtime <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm gonna play the music, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was local chat number 36. Can you believe we've done this 36 times? Well, we haven't yet because the show's not over. Uh, joining me this week was the lovely Ian Gibson. You can find him on Twitter at Think Gibson. Ian, uh, any parting thoughts for everyone today? Yeah, you know, honestly, uh, strong showing from Sony at the showcase. Um, I'm actually looking forward to some of those games. Um, I just wish they would be clearer about their next gen upgrade process and yeah. their dates on trailers and kind of yeah. get some consistency and processes and consumer friendly things going, folks. Great. Uh, also joining us this week was David from Save Data. You can find him on Twitter at his Twitter handle that he'll probably say for you. David, any no, parting thoughts for just everyone? Just follow Save Data team. Don't follow me. I'm boring. Um, honestly, just agree with Ian and also go play Psychonauts 2, every single one of you. And if you really feel up to it, play Psychonauts 1, but at least play 2. Awesome. 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 I will definitely go do that. I'm going to be going to play more Hades as well as playing probably some more Outward and Ultima 9 Ascension. Uh, folks, uh, Saturday, I'm not sure what we're streaming yet. Do we know what we're streaming? Um, no, we don't. It's going to be a surprise. Surprise. And then Tuesday, it's we've gonna got be split another game. stream. And then next week, we're going to have another local chat for you right here on the channel, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be great. So until then, have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful life. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.